Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'll be talking about some of the work my team is doing in the energy space around making data more connected. Uh, so I'm part of the Oracle Energy and Water team. We've been working closely with the Gra Oracle Graph database team um, as we've started to build a new offering for the energy industry. Uh, and they invited us here today to talk about what we've been up to. Okay, so for the energy and water industry, the pace of change is really increasing. Our head of UX reminded me of this quote. It really rings true right now, for the energy industry. Uh, in the background is the drastic decrease in the cost of computing storage over time, uh, which has been a great example of the impact of persistent innovation. Well, I've got two other lines to show you. Uh, check out this line. This shows the decrease in the cost per kilowatt hour of solar panels. In many cases, solar generation is now cheaper than kilowatt hours or per kilowatt hour than coal. All right, um, here's another line for you. This shows the drastic decrease in the cost per kilowatt, kilowatt hour for lithium ion capacity. So as you can see, the, the drastic changes that are impacting the energy, energy industry right now are beginning to be on pace with those changes we're used to in computing. There are also some major mega trends impacting the energy industry. There's major venture capital uh, funding coming in for clean tech. EV growth projections are uh, you know, large, as everybody knows. And this is all backed up by government incentives at this point. So we have a lot of stuff aligned, which means that big changes are already in the works. Uh, but we're not, we're not there yet. So I want to talk a little about where we are today and, and where we're trying to help the industry get to. So today, uh, consumers still struggle with their EV experience. They lack confidence in EV charging networks. Um, and there are many, many cases where there still needs to be a more complete picture across vendors. So in a connected future, the connected future that we want to try to push to, um, utilities would be able to help EV manufacturers focus their outreach or Focus EV network plant planning to where new charging locations should go, or maybe even calculate a more accurate busy time for some of these networks. Back to today again, uh, the, the electricity grid forecasting is becoming much more challenging. Grid operations are kind of lacking this view of where all the distributed energy resources are going, whether it's solar or batteries. Um, so the connected future that we want to push to is really where grid planning becomes smarter with connected data. You really have organizations that are becoming more resilient by sharing data rather than less resilient. Back to today one more time. So consumers often lack a complete view of their energy and water um, when, they're, when they're trying to make decisions. Um, and what we're pushing for is to get a more connected view with your whole home usage and rating information, whether that be in solar apps you use or an EV experience or any of the emerging experiences that are coming up. So we believe connected data across organizations is essential for innovation, especially in the energy space. Um, and my team is working on a new service to help these different groups share their data securely on Oracle Cloud. The new service we're building is called the Energy and Water Data Exchange. Um, it provides a central standardization point between utility systems, these emerging energy innovators, think Tesla or Generac, and, and government organizations like state data exchanges. And we're really focused on three main problems at first uh, for this service, so I'll hit on those briefly. So the first problem, we've got a lot of systems, a lot of different companies, all disconnected, a lot of them on different clouds. So we're, we're focused on making it easier for utilities to replicate and get all their data in one place, send that to all the destinations they need, destinations they need internally, but also securely share that data with their external vendors and partners in innovation. The next thing that comes up as a problem is really just the amount of cost that goes into all these integrations. Uh, there's often high IT development and consulting costs. And while we can't take any of that away, our goal is to really think, how can we prevent this from be, be feeling like reinventing the wheel every time? So our focus is to get data mapped once and build subscriptions to everybody that needs it uh, from that same place. Uh, we're 
leveraging the awesome connectivity and security that's baked right into Oracle Cloud and to OCI um, that helps you getting move, moving faster. And because we're on Oracle Cloud, the support for multi-cloud to get you know connected to the people that are on, are on AWS or Azure or other clouds, um, it's all there by default. Finally, the last problem that we're focused on is is really, you know, this uh, the fact that each system has a different way of thinking about data. There's lots of different data models out there, lots of different standards. So we're focused on building uh, a knowledge graph, a standard data model, an ontology that really connects the core data that most people use and need to share in our industry. Um, so. This will help utilities standardize their data, but it'll also connect to other real world intelligence like the EV networks out there, like social sentiment. So I wanna talk a little bit about graph. I wanna take a step back. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about why I believe graph is so essential when trying to connect data. So when you think about relational data, um, it's fast and easy to work with for transactional systems, uh, but the connections are really focused on simple relationships. This works fine for a closed ecosystem or a single app, but when we want to share data, um, an ontology and knowledge graph is the best way to, to really model all the relationships out there in the real world. So let me go through some examples of this. Um, so for utilities, like, like many uh, industries that, you know, each group has their own view of the data that's most important to them. Um, and, you know, they've got these different domains that largely kind of work in their own space. So what we're trying to do is bring those together and have a better standard definition across organizations of what sits in the middle of all this, as well as how the real world thinks of various pieces of equipment, different specs, and, and all those things standardized. And once you have that, those common links in the middle, you're able to really branch out and connect to all the things that are emerging. Um, so utilities need a good view of what's happening with electric vehicles, what's happening with battery storage systems, and, and vice versa. Um, that way, better planning can be done, better understanding of where things are going, and better experiences for consumers. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a, a quick example that's not not related to what I was just talking about about why an ontology matters, and then I'll connect it into why we're why we're so focused on this. So YouTube they leverage an ontology to help categorize videos. Um, so where something's been identified by machine learning, and you, they want to drive better recommendations, that ontology is really driving a lot of that. So let me let me get into this in detail. So uh, this is an example here of detecting that this is a golf video. You can see in the top left-hand corner there that uh, it's been detected that there's a 91% probability of this being a golf video. So I think the how for how they do this um, should be pretty self-evident, but then really how, how they connect to all the concepts on the right is really where the question comes up around an ontology. So in terms of detecting this is a golf video, vision machine learning is in play here. Um, you know, really using machine learning to see that the, the different at attributes of the video are golf. But then the question is, how, do, how does that get connected to Tiger Woods or the Masters or Callaway Golf Company so that those kinds of recommendations can be made to you as a, as a user of the platform? And it, that's really where the knowledge graph and ontology come in. They've got real world map intelligence of how golf relates to these other concepts. And that's how they're able to connect all this up. So an ontology is uh, the standard definition and connected intelligence of real world concepts and relationships for a particular domain. You can think of it like the Rosetta Stone for a you know, particular set of data for industry data for a particular domain. Uh, we're working on that for the energy and water space right now. Um, we're at the beginning of integrating an ontology into the core of what we do at Oracle Energy and Water. This isn't just some academic exercise. We're obsessed with real world application of this intelligence. Uh, but we believe that the ontology will be the enabler of truly connecting data internally for utilities, driving faster machine learning and making it easier to share data out with different organizations as you need to. So at the start of this talk, when we went through the connected possibilities that we're striving for in the energy industry, 
um, you know, I talk through these areas. We believe an ontology powered intelligence accelerates all of that. And the awesome thing about an ontology is that just in its very nature, it's built for anyone to expand around it. Um, you can add ontology concepts around what we've done. Um, you know, data models can coexist. And instead of getting caught up in this data modeling hell, where we firmly believe in focusing on connecting data only when you need to. So focus on like the 20% of data you use 80% of the time. So I wanna go through a demo of some of the knowledge ontology and knowledge graph work we're in the middle of, and uh, you know, it should give you a better sense of what I'm talking about. So what you'll see here is, you know, we're bringing in a lot of the features of utility, the utilities think about meters and transformers and substations, but we're connecting in with uh, things that are out there like the electric vehicle models, like I was talking about that you can see here and all the engineering specs behind those that, um, you know, lets you know exactly how those are going to impact the grid. Um, we also are modeling in the organizations that you know, are, in, are working on the grid. So this is a picture, uh, this is a view of the continental grid of Europe and all the transmission system operators that impact that. Uh, this one is the North American grid with all the transmission system operators that work and impact that grid. And then working down from there, a view of the utilities that are involved uh, in sur surfacing the grid. And then once you get further down, really the get to where we're connecting up the data of how a utility thinks about a person and their account with the utility and connecting all that location information over to like what's happening for the transformer that feeds them, what's happening up the grid in terms of tech, uh, the equipment with circuits and substations. And once we get all that in place, we get to the ability to have a true you know, electric vehicle 360, for example, where um, you know, if we can see where electric vehicle owners are um, on the grid, it helps the planning, but we need to connect it up to concepts that are out there. Like for instance, um, you know, what EV charging network have they used or even what kind of electric vehicle model do they have? Cause you know, the, the size, the battery and all of that impacts a lot of what needs to be done to make sure that all this can be planned for and make sure that you know, the, the energy that you need to, to service your needs is there when you need it. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about um, when we started down this path. So uh, when we started on the new data exchange product, uh, my team decided to operate like a startup within Oracle. We started small. We wanted to prove that we could do something truly different with connecting up data. Uh, the autonomous database with graph built right into it was perfect for our, to help us get started. We were able to get going in days to prove out uh, a few fundamental hypotheses we had. And we were able to get a, a start to the ontology and merge in data from our cloud apps within a month. Um, the awesome thing is that the same core services we used to prototype, we were able to just scale up automatically. So we were able to scale up autonomous data warehouse and OCI with Terraform. So we were able to prototype with the same service, prove out the ideas, and then those were the same services we used to expand on our path to general availability production. OCI gave us instant world-class security and connection patterns. Um, you know, we're trying to crack something challenging. We're trying to crack how to let organizations share industry-specific data um, with security at its heart. So this was essential for us to get moving quickly. Uh, not only were we able to innovate quicker at scale on OCI, but we've been able to help utilities start deriving new insights across different energy data sources um, with Oracle Analytics Cloud once we've been able to standardize the data. Uh, we'd like to show you a quick demo of that. So what you're seeing here is a map in Oracle Analytics Cloud and um, the Customers, different households that have electric vehicles, um, we're going to change that to a heat map. And then the dots that you see left on the map are the public EV chargers that are around them. So have, being able to merge these two data sets together and make sense out of the two of them um, is really crucial, not only for utilities to plan out where they need to expand and prepare the grid for growth for electric vehicles, 
But also, even if you were an EV network planner, you'd want to say like, all right, where has the electric vehicle adoption already started in terms of you can see that heat map? And where should I put the next set of EV chargers um, publicly to, to support that? All right, that's the end of uh, the talk. So thank you very much.